the forge has gone quiet, the bellows blow no more. The forge has gone quiet, the smiths have gone home. Only fading embers remain, and my hearth grows cold. One kiss from you to rekindle it all. Back to Queen of Embers, episodes 45 and probably 46 as well. <clears throat> I'm your Game Master Daniel Fox. This is the game, the cult, the people who made Zweihander and Mongosh and Queen of Embers and a bunch of other stuff really awesome you're going to see in December. Um, and it will eventually play Test Chateau, which nobody here around the table has played yet. I was really tempted to go like hang out with Matt while playing <laughs> the game. He's like, you should stop by. And I was like... I'm gonna sit there and I'm gonna game the game. Don't I'm not can't show. <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, for those who don't know, including present company, um, we ran games at Gen Con. Uh, Matt Jowett, uh, who just recently joined Grimgrella Studios, ran our games there, and who ran seven groups of eight people, I think. Yeah. Seven groups of eight people through a a one shot called Chateau that I wrote for Gen Con. Released as part of our organized play program, yet unnamed, um, but we'll be running it among all of us in the near future. We got really good feedback, though. Uh, what was the total death count? Seven. Seven people died. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Jumps. Yeah. <clears throat> and and uh, but he his death count was like six out of four, I think, and so he eventually was worried that you know he may. Not be able to keep up, but then in the last game, he was able to kill one. <laughs> right. Nice. So, I think we should just jump on the game. All right. Okay. Let's just jump right in because I think that um, it'll be good for us to start. So, uh, last we left off on Queen of Embers, you all have spent some time in the lower city in Kieltarian and got to gotten to know. Several characters uh, who will not only be it, who will who are notable within the story, but most importantly, notable within the city, and will be present during the party. I think we should probably just talk about who we met, and I think everybody has some cards for people that they met, made connections with. <coughs> you now keep in mind. So the level set, you all have came to Kaeltirian aboard the Madeline. It is harbored in the lower city. You have come here with Wolfgang Copper. You come here with um, <clears throat> Sammy Newhouse and Frung Bigley. Most importantly, though, the barrister Rosalia Mansfield, who has kind of unfolded kind of a lot of the details of what's kind of happening behind the scenes and some secrets. Clearly, there's like a the the, the Dupre have been kind of left on the periphery, and it seems that for good or for ill. The information is now spilling forth freely from Rosalia about precisely what the Baroness intends and all the details that surround it, up to and including trying to seal the deal with, with Lord Clayton Arquet, an important minor noble who will be made baron if he signs his declaration of fealty to ensure the successful cessation of Durendal from the Roving Girl, from Aglador for whatever means the Baroness has intended. So we come to Kael Tyrion. Let's start first with maybe... Let's start first actually with Elisa. All right. So uh, Elisa tried at first to hide who she was and talk to Dominus Satine, but unfortunately it was asked her name and in that moment, couldn't think of something better to say, so said her actual name. <laughs> and so uh, now she's being surrounded by the sycophants that follow Domna's team, and Domna has asked her to escort her to the uh, event that the Baron is throwing. So. <laughs> and uh, it turns out that one of the other people that is due to be there is 
her father, which is Tobias Stroh. What do we know about Tobias Stroh? And uh, Tobias is uh, a trader with the river barges um, who was frustrated with the salt peterman, apparently. Uh oh. We found that way? Yes. <laughs> so, to keep these names kind of in. Order. What I'm going to do is I'm going to write their names down on little post-it notes here, or postcards, so we keep them all kind of in play as we come to the masquerade later on. You have the guest <coughs> list over there. I do, and with notes. <laughs> nice. So, Tobias Stroh, and we'll use just simply for play aids, uh, Domino Satine. And for our listeners, we're literally using just post-it notes like this. If you want to hold up another post-it note, you wouldn't mind. So what we do around our table, we actually do personal post-it notes for people, places, things. And I'll typically write something at the top, and they'll write it details below. Yeah, like does. We use this as kind of like this play aids. But we're going to use these for the party to put them out. So, so far, we have Domino Satine and Tobias Strell. Good, good. Do we know the size of said party? Has that actually been told to us? Not yet. I didn't think so. Okay. We only got the VIP list. Right. Well, I didn't get any list, I think. Just give it to all of us. I got failed miserably on my check. That's right. So, who's Lord Clayton Arcade's wife? Oh, okay. I didn't know this. The Lady Arcade. Lady Gabriella. Who does not like us already. <clears throat> yeah, and who's a uh, sister to Wolfgang. And, and, and she's a drunk. And the other guy. She's a slush. Uh, Dirge the Younger. He's the man at arms for the Bears. That's right. So, do you meet anybody else? Uh, mm -hmm. Ice King. Ice Cream. No, man. I'm talking about oh, talking to uh, Elisa for now. I did not. Okay. Other than her followers, because apparently she's very influential with the young people. Did you learn anything else about her? Um, I seem to recall something being revealed toward the end of the game session. That her father works with the Velvet Throne, which is a criminal organization? Yes. I assume that's the other note. <laughs> she said she, her father had business in Old Lork, and she was like kind of ashamed to say it. The Velvet Throne, is that something we should know about? Maybe you'll find out about it in game. Okay, yeah, well, no, 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 I just didn't know if it was. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's some kind of. I didn't know it was well known or. Some kind of criminal organization that her father and her have ties to. The Velvet Throne, yeah. Mm -hmm. Who rules in Old Lord now? By the by. Who runs Barter Town? No one knows. I know. Money rules it. Well, of course, Lady in White and the Man in Red. That's what I thought. Okay. That's right. <coughs> I was wondering what organization that was. That's what I was mm -hmm. So. That's all I know. Let's move on then to Warren. Warren. Warren and Bannock and uh, Harper met the Ice King. What's yeah, the Ice King's name. He had a very what's his name? Germany long sounding name. I don't remember. Hagen Hasselnuss. Hagen Das. Yeah, got it. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> <laughs> the Hasselhaus for her. Hagen Hasselnuss. Sure. Okay. What's Hasselnuss. important about Hagen Hasselnuss? I mean, he ships in <laughs> ice from the stead wall. That's right. Yeah, which is used. I just want to know what you wrote anything uh, else down. In his uh, new yeah, ice, yeah. or creamed ice. And uh, he'll be serving at the, uh, well, his company <laughs> will be serving at the party. It's the ice cream man. <laughs> <laughs> he serves creamed ice. Ice yeah. cream man cometh. <laughs> so, what was that again? Like, uh, yeah, like, yeah, no, no. Harung Bigly, yeah, no. Yeah. So, yeah, so he's a guy bringing ice. He's going to be running, uh, well, his people will be running the dessert bar oh, right. at uh, the event. Yeah. That's right. He so, wears Garish clothing. Yeah. Very, very, <coughs> very, very large. Large. Any, any, Anyone else that you had spoken with, Warren? Did we end up going up to the upper level of the city? No. Uh, I thought we were able to make our way up there. No. Mm -hmm. Uh, we were staying in the upper level. You, but you you had set off and intended to. But they closed the gates right. at night. That's right. Yeah, no one's watching. <laughs> no, they're, Do you they're remember watching. Lord Clayton R. 
Kay's um, steward? Uh, yes, Kenneth and Algiers. Well, that's his quartermaster. I assume that's what he's doing. What's notable about Kenneth and Algiers? He's a ginny man. He's a gin of you, that's right. What else about him? Peacemaker for the Malisters and Dupre. He was at the sack of Hastings. Oh. He was the one who uh, negotiated the truce, in fact. You guys remember that adventure? When you yeah. guys had sack Hastings? Yeah. Man, that was a long time ago. <laughs> you were there, Nick, weren't you at that point? No. I thought we liberated Hastings. You you did liberate Hastings. <laughs> I think that was the. That's a polite way of saying you sacked the to sack I, the town. I think that was the campaign bef- just the campaign just before been, I started. Yeah, yeah it, was. It, it, was. it was. It was. It may have been true. Yeah, we were. You remember the head, who the head chef is? At this Oliver event? Ramsey. <laughs> Oliver Ramsey. <laughs> Anything you know about Oliver Ramsey? He's a cook. That's all we had. <laughs> And, uh, I, have, I have more. This kitchen is a nightmare. Yeah. This kitchen is a fucking nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> School ch- kids are fat because of the food they eat. <laughs> I'm sure he'll have critiqued the shit out of the Ice King's ice cream ice. Right. You call it's this creamed raw. ice? The Ice King's creamed ice. That's right. <laughs> I know, I know, dude, you can't say it's not good. That's right. It ain't natural. So I know that uh, Walter, uh, who is playing. Um, a new character, Jonathan Vander, now is not here, but he met Josephine Booker. Josephine Booker, who apparently was an old schoolmate of his and an Eloranite. And likes to exaggerate and has an annoying shrill laugh. <laughs> she does. She was uh, she was hell bent on uh, ensuring that uh, that uh, <clears throat> Jonathan Vander knew she was better than him. <clears throat> I seem to recall oh, because she had made it to. Is she a, a certain level in the Alornites, or is she just ambiguous Alornite? <clears throat> She's an ambitious Alornite. Ambitious, <laughs> all ambitious. ambitious. As all Alornites <laughs> are. Yeah, yes. Alornites are very ambitious. <laughs> and she's ambitious. friends with Lady Gabriella. That's <laughs> right. She is friends with Lady Gabriella. So we'll put Josephine Booker over here by friends. Lady Gabriella. But she, is she a sycophant friend? Like a. A, a, a latch on for society. All we have is one. Well, we have to go. Are there any other ends were used? She said she was friends. Oh, she used quotes. Okay. Who else did we find out is going to be there? Uh, what about from your perspective, Vinegar? I didn't meet anybody. That's right. You and uh, I will have no part in this. I was intoxicated. <laughs> <laughs> so, what about from the perspective of Terwin? Darren met up with Dirge the Younger. Uh-huh. I thought he met up with Jen D. Cooper. That's right. Oh. No, I met with Jenny D. Cooper. Okay. <laughs> what, what's the little bolt, sir, Jenny D. Cooper? I Wait. thought Dirge the Younger was the guy I met. Uh, so yeah. he was he was a war veteran, just like me, and he was on the other side. Yeah, he was. He was on the losing side, I might say, but I didn't rub it in his face. <laughs> the um, losing side. You may have burned and or killed some of his friends. Uh, your yes, grandfather, your grandfather might have. My spare. grandfather, my father, and myself all served in that war. I was extremely young. I was like probably twelve. <laughs> but yeah, you were literally a war bastard. Yeah. Okay, so they the war bastards uh, for a little bit of historical context in the campaign. The younger squires or pages were always charged with what's called the stitching, which is where they walk among the fields of the ailing and dying, and they take spears and they. In them. In them, yes. Dispatch them? Dispatch them, yes. Put them out of their misery. <clears throat> so, go on. Uh, yeah, but uh, there were plenty of sly, uh, uh, backhanded remarks from Jenny Cooper towards um, Terwin. He tried to let it roll off his skin, but, you know, Terwin's not exactly the most composed all the time. Um <laughs> So he became a little unsettled, and he just out, out and came out with the fact that uh, um, uh, Genity, his brother, was in town, uh, uh, Wolfgang. And uh, then Genity got up right away and left. And he was like, oh, fuck, that's right, they don't get along. And, that's right. Well, we didn't know that, did we? Uh, actually, Wolfgang did. Um, 
uh, say that him and his brother did not get along. And um, But Taryn was unsettled from all the insults that uh, he didn't think about it until afterwards. And, uh, like, anyways, uh, so uh, he was immediately concerned and went back to the boat because he tried to figure out where Wolfgang and Go went. And um, nobody knew, so he thought the best thing for him to do was to stick around to the boat in case he heard any word. Um, just, uh, he didn't know what to do, so. That's right. He was stuck there. And for Banneker. Sorry, not Banneker, my apologies, keep doing that. Harper. Yeah, so I was mostly talking with the Ice King, and we drank a lot with him because I bought him a drink. Um, but I thought I couldn't remember if we were did we meet one of the performers or were we hoping to run into the performers it was one of the performers actually at the uh, at the uh, party I don't remember his name I have it in front of me yeah, um, guess what, it's alright Vetter Cobain Vetter Cobain, what Vetter Cobain, what about Vetter Cobain, what do we know about him he's the baritone of Belagame yeah, the baritone of Belagame Side I note. think you were there for that because I think you were giving like him shit or something like that. Side note: game. I had a pre-gen character at Gen Con, and I called myself Vetty Etter, and nobody got it—not <laughs> a single person. I'm sad. Vetta Cobain. <laughs> Were they really young or something? The Baritone no. Pelican. <laughs> Vetty Etter. Nobody got it at the table at the bar. So, what do we do? We know anything else about Vetter at this point? He's just an entertainer, and he's the baritone. That's all I got. Anybody else we missed that was on the list? Uh, R.H. Block. Who's R.H. Block? <laughs> he's a tax man who does the taxes for the Baron. He's, he's Walter CEO. <laughs> <laughs> he's a tax man. Wee ba 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 da boop. Oh ba 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 da boop. Wee ba 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 da boop. He runs the local man. university's uh, business school. Oh wait, that's only. <laughs> Two blocks away. <laughs> Anyone else we missed? Uh, Armani Warhol. Who's that? An artist. <laughs> I, I'm guessing all of you can figure these out. Help him any Really, to really explain it to me. That's good. Um, so we've got. He likes quite... to have copies of himself randomly in places. That's right. Is there anybody? Is there anyone else that we didn't talk about? Delilah. Who's Delilah? The dancer. I think you've got everybody. Kennison's not written down. No, Kennison's right here. Kennison Algiers, yeah. I think that's everybody wants to is, is Warhol, is, Was Warhol known for his flower sack portraits? <laughs> his glasses. It's always his his flower sack portraits. He had a big. Yeah, we'll find out. That's everybody. So that okay. comprises everyone we met. Are there any details that we missed out on? <clears throat> um. Uh, we know the lady, Gabrielle, the more she drinks, the more she slanders the queen. I mean, Baroness. Uh, Your queen, of course. We, yeah, we, we, oh, oh, oh. The Baron Arcade. Apparently, Lights rumors has it that he has uh, woodcuts of the Baroness. In their Ooh. Ooh. No, you're not know, It's pornographic. I was trying to be, you know, joke. They are indeed repeatedly <laughs> scandalous woodcuts. Well, you said you specifically said pornographic. I, I know he said pornographic. <laughs> I was trying to be a gentleman. You scoundrel. <laughs> you why, why, scoundrel. Why, is, why is pornographic scandalous? I mean, it doesn't have to be. Because it's, it's my what queen. Was, I mean, it's Baroness, what all right? Tasteful. Show her some respect. And if you recall, <laughs> back in Durendal, you kind of heard stories that there are a number of salacious, penny dreadful spreading around of her nude and that uh, her, the brigandine, had seized and destroyed press, uh, um, destroyed wood blocks uh, and other things, lithographs of the of the uh, stuff. If you remember, the Baroness is su supposedly a very amorous person. That people are attracted her like moths to a flame. She's got the look. And she's got literally the look. She's got the look. She's got the look. What else can make a bright-eyed Aridane turn, sorry, Ravanian turn blue? Yeah, exactly. She's got to look. If there's anything to do in the world, Harper will do it. 
For you. La 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 lady. La 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 Seriously, in every episode, the Queen of the Universe is like, somebody is singing. Somebody sings. It's either Mike or I or Adam or Nick. Somebody sings something. I just started. Tim does. Kay hasn't yet. Yeah, I have. Happy, would you sing? I don't remember, but I have randomly. Well, this episode, you were Okay, that's my requirement. You must sing. You must sing. Don't joke and sing a song. Challenge the Barrett. I love I love making up songs. This is what we do. So what else did we so did we miss anything in there, Mike? Uh, I know I know both you and Elisa have quite a few notes. The, we went shopping for the masquerade. Yeah, we bought you bought masks. I bought uh, a wig. That's what you did. The only person who didn't mind mask is Varen. Let's see, we went to Rickard's Halfway Inn. I remember that name. Yeah, Rickard's Halfway Inn. It's a local. Oh, and Sammy paid out our 20 gold. That's right, you got cash. Cash money. Rickard's Halfway Inn. Mm -hmm. Do you not remember this? Are you sure you did? We we had this this whole silly joke about smelling, we're leaning over and smelling run, didn't we? Guys, I don't know. I've had two cutovers since then, and my brain is mush. <laughs> so, uh, at this point, it is the following day. You know that today da, 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 is the masquerade. Uh-oh. It I'll is officially, day. it is officially now the autumnal equinox, the turn from autumn to winter. Oh. Goodbye. Oh, your injury's gone! Yeah. Let me see. I'll have your injury back. What injury did you have? Splintered elbow. Oh my god! How many days? Uh, I think it was 17. Oh! But <laughs> add five or six because of our road trip. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> the thing is, I had... Uh, no, I had one day left when we started our journey. <laughs> you don't recover while you're traveling. Were you tracking That's it right. with candles? Huh? Were you tracking it with candles like during one day? I guess so, Because yeah. if... if so you would have had sixteen candles. Sixteen candles. By the way, a movie Thank that does you. not hold up very well these days. Yeah. There's some weird rapey stuff in it, like a lot of eighties uh, movies, like the original yeah. nerds. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there is. The what? Vader scene where he literally raped so, what's a guy what's oh god. So you're saying sixteen candles went down the drain? It's not songs, it? Okay. So <laughs> it is the following day, and you know that this evening Specifically, or no, it isn't. Yeah, it is. Yeah, tonight. Was it tonight or tomorrow? I think it is tomorrow. I think you still have one more day. You're right. You still have one more. You're absolutely right. You have one more day to prepare. You're absolutely right. Day zero. Because we have one short day in the Emerald City. That is right. (laughs) So it is the following day in Kael Tyrion. The sun is the sun is not visible because remember you're in the lower city and along the river two massive cliffs. Bluffs rise above the lower city, where a huge stone arch bridges the world above, where you know the upper city rests, where Kael Tyrion is. Despite this, there are many different homes that cling to the side of the bluff. There are a number of stairwells, pulleys, elevator-like things that bring people up and down. But there's life all along the axe water, kind of rambling down the broad, wide river. And it seems to be at its deepest here, where it becomes narrow between these massive bluffs that are literally where the end of the stead wall seems to almost terminate, leading into low, forested hills to the west. You're literally in the place between where the Robain Girdle and Aglador meet here at the river. Kael Tyrion, as you know, has been a city of the Eloranites for quite some time, and there's a very well-known story about how the bastard king infiltrated Kael Tyrion from the lower city when they had made their way through the sewers into the castle holdings above and had seized the castle from within. But the bastard king is no more. His reign is over. And his own own court killed him, right? uh, It's not really... no. Well, uh, no. I apologize. Actually, you do know what happened to him. Uh, Cassander Malice, the king, Cassander Malice, for the Unifier, uh, had him executed. Here in Kelterian. Mm-hmm. He is the unifier. But he just unified the bastard king to ensure that his rule will not be challenged. But his own court was the reason he fell, right? That's correct. Yeah. Okay, I thought so. I thought that was the word. Yeah, he was a he was a a bloody minded 
king. Not Malister, but uh, the bastard king, Ethan, yeah. Ethan Priam. So, you have awoken somewhat with a headache and are out in the city street where a number of clap, a clapboard corduroy road kind of winds this way and down on both sides of the city. You can see there are a number of fishing boats kind of strung together with rope. There are no bridges from one side to the other. You must pay uh, a, a ferryman to take you from one side to the other. Mm. It's always a bit penny a leg. So if you're a veteran, you pay one. If you're a normal person, you pay two. If you have a horse, you pay your legs plus the horse's legs. And if you're Aradain, you pay four. That's correct. You pay triple. Or double, rather. Double, yeah. So this, place is a, this place has a deep, abiding sense of loyalty to those who are Avanian. And to the Aradain, they thumb their nose at them as, as the Aradain thumb their nose and raise their noses above everybody else. And uh, most people, it is, it's, most Aradain folk are, are, can pass for really Bravanian or Aradain, but some who are born of the aristocratic classes, such as uh, our friend here, Benninger Steeples, you're an aristocrat, right? Yes. Yeah, they're, they're, the blood, they, their blood can be traced back to the Forbidden Kingdom, and they maintain their kind of hawkish features or narrow features that are very distinguishable among others. Those who are born, burgers are lowborn. Typically can get away with not looking like they're Aradane until you listen to the talk. But the Aradane have a very distinct lilt to their to their accent. They have very pronounced features, and thus the Rovanians, who are kind of a who are kind of intermingled their blood with all manner of other ethnicities, uh, are hard to distinguish really anywhere. But the Aradane stand out like a sore thumb because they oftentimes are much taller than their Ravanian cousins. So. You are no cousin of mine. You are no cousin of my name. <laughs> so, it is the following morning. Some of you are nursing a hangover, others are not. <clears throat> uh, you restore your apparel condition tracks to unhindered, unless you were intoxicated the night before. Then you don't recover at all. Well, I wouldn't recover. But... That's right. Uh, actually, you do, because you took. Black Lotus at the end of last game session, and you learned that's when you when you begin to and you remember it's when you use your true detective ability. Right, right. And you had learned uh, of the Velvet Throne. Oh, that's right. Okay. That was the that was the insight you had gained. But I had taken Lotus, and I thought uh, from persecution complex you have to take laudanum. Yeah. Uh, assume it's all drugs. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's not laudanum specifically. Yeah, all drugs. Any um, mind belching. Yeah, any poison. Except for alcohol. <laughs> or no, we'll say alcohol too, why not? Yeah, Might as, as well. long as you don't get intoxicated, because then... Yeah. That's right. Yeah, so any, any poison. Oh, okay. So you're saying that she can pick her poison? I was about ready to say that. Ah! <laughs> pick her poison. And judge with the poison. Yeah, beat you to the punch. That's all right. This is a Bell Bell DeVoe somewhere in her song in here, too. Poison. 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 Boop, boop, boop. Poison. Jup, jup, jup. That girl... Is poison. Can't get her out of my mind. She can't recover to unhand her until she is out of her mind. Project in the complex. You know. Look out for our mixtape. It's coming. <laughs> it is coming. It's fire. <laughs> it is three fire emojis. Yeah. So, it is the morning. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, it is the morning. <laughs> what do you all want to do? You still have some time. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> Guess we're on kind of a silly high up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, we were we were nominated uh, fan favorite publisher. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. We definitely got drunk play. every day. <clears throat> yeah. Well, isn't that thing? Yes. Yeah, well, let's let's play clean for a second. Sorry. Uh, Sorry. 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 Back, back to well, so we want to take a look at the uh, or Harper will be like, well, we, I think we did a pretty good job scouring the lower city. Did we want to rustle up to the top? I think it's I think it's only best to try and find out more, but. Uh, Hang on to that for. Did Wolfgang ever return? To yeah, the that was about right. He's not yet now. Uh, so yeah, uh, they at least give the name of the doctor you see. The doctor, Sammy says. Yes. I reckon he's probably up in the upper city. All right. Well, we can ask about. We can ask about when we're up there. So, 
Is there any other business that we need to take care of here in the lower city? Not on my end. Nope. I put I purchased my garish attire for the masquerade. No boss, I'm good. I mean, are, are you supposed to meet up with uh, Dominus the team? Sir, she did want to help me buy a dress. When do these festivities begin? The Madeline rocks back and forth in the harbor. You recall most of this happened the evening before you would slept on the ship with Sammy and had a long conversation. Goddamn gulls everywhere! It does appear that it's possible we can speak to Tobias. He is supposed to be in the lower part of the city. Which one's Tobias? Dominus' father. The traitor. Um... Would there be any reason that any of us would want to speak with him? You know, like, perhaps somebody could come along with you. You'd be like, hello, this is my friend so-and-so, and then um, he's wanting to talk to your father. Possibly securing passage back down the river. The dolls are traitors. Oh, yes. I meant with a D. <laughs> ah, a merchant. You meant uh, this business we're about. Your wordplay is lovely. Though. Ah, I thought you liked that. Yes. <laughs> because your brain has not been under the fog. Oh, it really has, though. <clears throat> <laughs> and then, but uh, as far as I can tell, the others are artists, but I would assume they're on the upper. It's supposed to lower part of the city. Mm-hmm. Make the most sense, yes. Well, so. Well, artists should be with who we should be recruiting and speaking with. They go between all social classes. Indeed. Yeah, so I don't necessarily want to just say, hey, Domina, I want to meet your father without a reason. So. Like I said, securing passage back towards, you know, uh, Drendel. You think that's good enough? To be honest, I could probably say whatever I want to her. She's kind of infatuated with me, Captain Andrews. So, no, I've only I've only heard what you said. We didn't really. There was none of us with you. So, what what I'm getting at is, would it be possible to take one of us with you, and we could meet? Of course. And then the rest of us can go into the upper city. Of course. I'm 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 thinking you're the perfect person. To, to meet a traitor, yes. yes. To, to well, go into the upper city. Is that with a T or a D? I'm a bit confused. I'm because because your boss. Whatever you tell me to do. Even though you're Aerodyne, you're still uh, the uh, upper crust. I don't know if things work like that around here, as far as I can tell. You know, you I'm not around down. here, then you don't, you know, they don't get along too well. It seems to be uh, after meeting the ice cream maker and everyone else that I am... Oh, I'm sorry, the creamery man, or whatever he called himself. Iced cream. Ice creamed, creamed ice. Creamed ice. ice. Yeah. Uh, whatever it is. The ice king, whatever. I like me milk warm. The, the man. No, Fresh. Let's not yeah. go with that, but the man was, you know, he didn't want anything to do with me because I was every day. And that has been kind of the case thus far with everyone we've met. They okay. wanted nothing to do with me. But it, if it was to be someone that would deal with you, someone who has some kind of relations outside of the city would be the most likely. Yes. Yeah. So, I think you should still go in the upper city. Okay. Um, and if I'm a disadvantage to you, just push me to the back and say, I don't know that knave. And <laughs> say <laughs> words about me. And You're an advantage. You're an asset too, don't ever forget it. So validating your feelings, Banneker. Flatter. <laughs> flatter? I never call him a flatterer. <laughs> so are you. Everyone here is crucial and vital. We've all got we've all got our skills. We will bring many things to this table. Anyways, let's move on. Continue. Oh right. nice thing, I forgot to mention. Yeah. Then uh the barrister Rosalia mentioned something about the assassin. Yes. They're gonna be wearing blue. Gonna be wearing blue, and they won't be using a blade. Mm-hmm. There's something else, Sammy. No, I was just recalling. 
<clears throat> so that was it. All I want. Yeah. And blue is the house color of Genevieve. the Chinese. Yeah. Which means it could be quite a bit blue. <clears throat> so. So. Miss Hmm. I'm not the ones to be talking to the upper crust, usually. Of course, I, I can be your mouthpiece between. I mean, I'm just saying. I know, you, I know my. St- I know my station, and then I'll, I'll think, uh, what social classes are you to your burger and your loved one. So, I'm thinking if we have a mix, some from the aristocracy, and someone who's a Vanian, you guys could at least do all right in the upper city. I should wish, boss, again, I mean, let's so, do this. So, who would you like to take away from you, Warren or myself? I'm asking you to make a decision. I would say take Unless, you. Warren, you're just dying to go up into the upper city or meet Dominus a team. If you're feeling decisive, I would like it. If someone was decisive. I wish I could say, but I'm kind of indifferent to it. And you're indifferent too, right? Uh, the one that would make the most sense would be the leader if we were to be discussing securing pack- the passage. I agree with that. All right, so I'm going with you. You know, this is a recipe for disaster, because any time it's just me and you. <laughs> we could avoid guns. That would be definitely Right, if you could just not get shot, that would be fantastic. Yeah. My elbow's finally back to where it was, and I'd like to keep it that way. Aw, oh, hell, y'all thinking this is old Lord? Sammy says. Okay, fair enough. Durand will do, I suppose. <laughs> Durand was that supposed to be That didn't happen safe. in old Lord, <laughs> Sammy. Durand was supposed to be safe. All right, so you free. All right. Let's go up. Who, me? So then I would suggest looking for either Armani or Delilah or Veda. What's up, you hayseed? You afraid? Did you? Well, are you chicken? <laughs> Sammy says. I mean, I'm just saying I'm a little out of my element, but. Chicka! 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 A cock a little do! A cock a little do! Have you ever seen a chicken? I was raised around chickens. <laughs> Well, uh, what, uh, what uh, kind uh, of advice you got uh, for me then? So you expert. I don't got no advice. <laughs> well, I'm just calling you a hayseed. Well, Stay down like here in the muck and the mud. Call like it is. I don't care. Well, did you have up a plan? I love when it gets mask <laughs> Well, I, I don't know. I'm just, I, you know, I just had a thought. You know, maybe we could start asking people what they're wearing to the, uh, the old shindig and then <clears throat> start to rule some big things out. You could ask your lady My friends, father's so you sons, he says. They're wearing damn masks. You hayseed? No, no, no. I mean, what? Besides the masks, you know, the, the dressings and, and everything else to well, see if it's blue or not. Well, you didn't you listen to what I told you the other night? What she told you the other night? We won't be able to tell who for what. That's right. She said, in fact, I think Jonathan Vender said, oh, they're going to be wearing whatever they want to wear so they can look like they're slumming it. They're wearing a damn mask to hide their intention. So, if you ask, if he's asking a person beforehand what the what they's gonna be wearing, they're not gonna tell you. Well, and it could be, it could be an insult too. Like, that's me business. You know. That's oh, what you, I see. It's like their quick, little game. Oh, yeah. no, quick no, no. getting, quick getting nosy. You, you, you are not really figuring this out. It would be an invitation for. What are you doing? Men and women things. Fornication. Oh, the organs. Not always men and women. <laughs> Sorry. Whatever. Fornication of whatever We're all particular flavor you. Sometimes it's a man and a woman and a man. Playing, so it's playing with each other's yeah. naughty bits. Is that fine enough for you? Bait and tackle. Start. Cash and prizes. <laughs> Fishing. Starting to, starting so if you, ask, together now, if you ask for somebody's identity, it, <laughs> it means that you are going to seek them out. Later in the night. Well, well I mean, it was just a thought, a good one, but uh, I guess it's not gonna fly. Well, I thought you're gonna, I thought you're gonna wear, you ain't gonna wear a mask anyway, so you ain't gonna make a hill of beans. Well, I didn't say. Or a hill of shit in the case of the night soil collective. <laughs> yeah, you got a loved one waiting for you, though. He's got a loved one on the left and the right. <laughs> I didn't say I wasn't gonna wear a mask. I just, you know, already got one. So, so what is our plan for? We need to find the artists. 
And we're sure they're in the open city? Well, I'm not assuming. But then let's they go. are commissioned autists that are I going believe part of the reason for going up to the upper city is to see if you can find Wolfgang. That is another mm-hmm. thing, yes. See if he's uh, recovered or uh, assaulted by his brother. There's also the call of the can master. We please hope that it's the second. Well, oh, that's dark. I'd rather have not. allies on my side at a time like this than not. Even Has if he truly been an ally? He's an ally of the Baroness. Has he yeah. truly been an ally? He's, he's, not, he's not necessarily, you know, so we're not necessarily in his favor, but, uh, you know, we're on the oh, same so side. So high. So many, uh, Nazis as there are. <laughs> yeah. All right, so, boss, if we divide up, uh, are you going to stand around on the street and look like, I don't even know what we're doing. The hayseed. A lollygagger. S- S- hey, I, I'm, not, blockhead. I'm not standing in anyone's way. As much as I hate it, we're splitting up again. <clears throat> so it's you and me. Like the ice creamed banana split. Right, exactly. What? what? Like uh, the creamed ice banana split. Hogan Hosdorf is talking about. Right. Wait, so now there's bananas? Right. Sounds <laughs> and mushy old fruits. Who the hell want to eat that? We well, put I mean, bread as well. You eat it when you when you got a bad stomach and all, but that's about it. Anyways, that's let's get on with it. So where are you all going? So we'll start first with um, Terwin. I'm going with Elisa uh, 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 to meet up with Domina Satine. Okay. Question mark. Okay. Because and alert to where we're going is fine, right? You can still do that path. So What's that? I'm sorry? Rivers all connect, right? River Old Lark to where? I'm sorry. To Durandal. The river does not go from Durandal to Old Lark now. Uh, it could go far part west. Of the far east. Okay. That's right. Okay. All right. Sorry. That was just a no. Good question. Like, um, if you're curious, I have the, I have a map here, uh-huh. and um, the river is far north of Durandal, right here. Anything that keeps us out of the pass. How about that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have our, have our viewers seen I think that we map go back before? Through, yeah. What's that? Have any of the viewers seen that map before? Patrons have. Patrons have. Patrons have. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, so if you're on our Patreon, you can actually view the map to the entire story on patreon.com forward slash Grim Parallel. Everyone else will have to wander. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and wander. So where were you intending to go, Banneker? Um, One of these people is a commission... They're, they're all commissioned artists. I would think that it would be pretty easy to find. Um, most likely would have re- residencies and or shops, right? That's right. So you want to try to track down Armani Warhol? Or do you sure. want to try to track down the Better Cobain, the Baritone of Bellagane? We've well, already met the, the Baritone. Baritone. He was not very nice, wasn't he? Didn't we meet him with the ice very cream pleasant. person? I mean, he probably liked me. He probably didn't like you. No one liked me. <laughs> There's yeah, the dancer. I mean, we, we figured that out. There's the dancer Delilah as well that we can track down. Okay, so we. I think we should do Warhol because he probably would be the easiest to find since he is an artist and most likely so got the upper city or lower city. I thought he was in the upper city with a gallery or so. Or I thought that was discussed that he had a show. We're going to go up to the upper city. We're going to upper city. Okay. We're going to find you. Okay, and find the captain for you, Harper. Yeah, I'm going up the upper city. I'll be trying to hunt down Wolfgang is what I'd be kind of suggesting for these fellas to do. Okay. Captain first. That's right. So, the in the in the lower city, here along the banks of the river, it is not difficult uh, to find Tobias Stroh. He is by far the most successful trader, if you will, in Kale Tyrion. And he has a number of river barges situated all along the jetties. In fact, there is a, as you kind of enter the surrounding warehouse yards, you can see Tobias Stroh, trader, uh, kind of upon this high wooden arch, and you can kind of enter into a very busy, very busy uh, place where a number of stevedores are ferrying goods this way and that. The business of Tobias Stroh is uh, surprisingly larger than you anticipated. Somewhere along one of these long jetties stands a man, um... And he is accompanied by who look like these kind of like salt and pepper bearded, um, weather worn gentlemen and women. Um, 
who were likely uh, dock workers, stevedores, as they're called. Their skin tanned from their long, uh, their long hours of work in the sun. And he has got a book of a sort, or he doesn't have a book, but his assistant has a book, and they're taking notes and accounting for weights. You can see a weights and measure system set up, uh, kind of a balance with a number of lead weights set up on it uh, as they are attempting to weigh things, probably small, uh, precious metals. And you also note that there are paid, uh, paid guards there, too, who kind of halt you before you step onto the jetty. Ho, ho, ho. Ho, 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 ho. Very Autumn Equinox. Hello? You as well. Uh, I seek to speak to Tobias, if possible. Tobias is busy. As Mr. Stroh, he says. You mean. Master. Indeed. It's Mr. Stroh. His Master daughter. Stroh. Master. My lady. Well, Master Stroh's daughter, Domina, sent me to come speak to him, possibly. He pauses for a moment. Roll a charm test. Uh, are you, what special class are you? Burger. Actually, it doesn't matter. Are you Erdane or... I am, uh, Romanian. Okay, so your test is gonna be routine charm. If you have to have. You may add an assist. You may add an assist <laughs> die for this, by the way. Your was half. Well, you may add an assist die to top Assist. Wrong one, but I know it's the wrong one, but she still counts to ten. Like you know, it's pink one. <laughs> <laughs> it is an off-color die, right? <laughs> she can count to ten. Charm. Uh, twenty-eight or thirty-eight should do it. Charm, I'm sure. Oh, Lady Satine. My apologies. A thousand apologies, for Lady. Please. Mm. They both step to the side and kind of let you walk down the gangplank. Your boots kind of rattle against the squeaking planks as it kind of bobs up and down and you could hear these two men beckering. These price, these weights are incorrect. No, sir, I assure you that they are not. I, by goodness, there's a, there's a bit of a dis, discourse happening. Eventually they settle up and uh, a man turns around with a salt and pepper beard and he too has uh, deeply tanned skin with weather-worn lines, crow's feet beneath it. He has the striking look of his daughter, but male and far older than she. But uh, like his daughter, or like his daughter has of he, his eyes are this deep hazel color. Uh, Master Stro. Oh, sorry. Yes, yes. Ah, my apologies. He, shoo, shoo, he says to his assistant. My lady, he takes a short bow. Lady Marius, I trust. <laughs> Slight head nod. Uh, indeed, yes. Uh, Dominius Domina had told me that Lady Marius was in Kale Tyrion. Yes, I find myself here. And I hope that you might be able to assist myself and my colleague here. I don't think we've had the uh, pleasure. He extends his hand. Hello, uh, name's Tywin Forrester. Master Forrester, good day to you. You. Your father, Cole Marius, good friend of mine. We uh, had some business some number of years ago here in Kaelterium. Do you believe I might have heard your name before? Hmm. It has been several seasons since I've seen Master Cole, but I am certain that he is a very busy man being uh, the King's Master of Spies. It has been a few myself, but uh, I'm sure... Father keeps himself busy. As yes. He always has. We have exchanged letters over time. Yeah. He has told me that you have, uh, that you are Dufresne now. Indeed. Mm. I am. Uh, speaking of that, that actually pertains to why I find myself here. Ah, well, please. Uh, Lady Marius. <laughs> well, uh, I will be attending the ball at the invitation of your daughter. She did, um, quite... Beautifully, it's tend me an invitation. Uh, however, after said ball, uh, does I do believe that Terwin and myself do find ourselves in need of transportation to leave this place. A bit of a pickle. He smiles. No, really, you must try these. He takes a 
Jarrod. <laughs> Don't mind if I do. Certainly. Recent shipment from Old Lork. <clears throat> Lork, you said. Brought all the way from Red Lark. Yes. To the west. Ain't nothing like an Old Lork pickle. I've heard about him. A Red Lark pickle. Hmm? A Red Lark pickle. Oh. He pulls the jar up in his. Red Lark. Hmm. The most pickly pickles ever pickled <laughs> in Anglador. Obviously, the. Uh... The man behind their marketing is quite, uh, quite the wordsmith, isn't he? Ah, so it's one of my own. It's a my own label I wrote. I, I authored. I take a huge bite into it. Oh, it's spicy. <laughs> Ooh, spicy. <laughs> Ooh, it's got to be a kick to it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, we bring in a number of spices from, uh, from south. Mix it with pickle juice and Violet, as they say, in Galeone. A man of many ventures, I see. Well, I, uh, dabble. I have, uh, recently begun, uh, looking at the commodities market. And he goes on and explains how, uh, a very long, lengthy kind of explanation of what he's been doing recently. I've divested by some of my investments into the pickle business, and he <laughs> continues this story. Anyhow, anyhow, my apologies, Lady Mary, so I don't mean to... Boy, with the details, I'm just oh, so pleased God. to meet you. Finally, you have the look of your father. You are unmistakably uh, the daughter of Marius. I don't know if that's a compliment or not, sir, but... <laughs> ah, it is. Call Marius a uh, good, strong jawline, he says. Glad to know it. Uh, not great with a bow, but... Ha <laughs> 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 You clap your shoulder. Surely you know that story. Heard a few. <laughs> a few. Oh yeah, but let, let's hear it. Ah, uh, perhaps another time. <laughs> he thinks you do some hireling anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what does the servant speak? Oh no, if you'd regale us, of course I, I would uh, love to hear it from another perspective. My father might have his own um, words to speak it. Me grand well, me it, grandfather never mentioned it. It was <laughs> some number of winters ago. We were out east and. We were betwixt here and there, between here and, well, the woods, and the western weald. Your father, in his younger days, uh, thought himself an expert archer, as well as an auteur of words. Mm. But I'm sure you're well aware, your father's position now, which uh, profession he took up. Mm. No less, he uh, fancied himself an archer, and uh, had a quibble with an old man in the woods. Told the man to stop. He um, fired, he let loose his quarrel, and uh, it drove true into the old man's leg. Uh, I'm sure that old man is probably dead by now, and looking back in retrospect, it was a, it is a funny story, but at the time we were all kind of wide-eyed and guffawed at such a brash uh, attempt to uh, stop a old man on a, on a, on a walking stick down his tracks. It's from there that the old Marius uh, Mullow became warning shots not words. But uh, unfortunately warning shots uh, crippled that old man. God's rest his soul. <laughs> Just so. <laughs> Some old man. Okay. Yeah, I'm sure your father looks back now and we can laugh about it but at the time it was uh, <laughs> I was quite aghast when it happened. I, I was still a very young man at the same time myself. I'll be honest, you're not saying anything shocking. Yeah. Well, I'd, uh, I, suffice to say, your father is not an expert archer, but is an auteur. And certainly where his arrows strike true, his words and pen strike truer to the heart of the matter. Your father has the respect of the King, the King Malison Unifier. His name carries weight, and well, my lady, Marius, I am your humble servant. He takes a deep bow. Well, uh, servitude aside, uh, I do ask, though, do you think that uh, possibly a transport to help us to try to get back? A transport to Durindal? Hmm. Mm. Well, he will well, consult his may have at least part way. Would be very useful. The trouble is the river does not run east until you come beyond Fiefstead. 
We'd have to go to Cauldron Lake, of course, first. We could stop maybe... We could probably take you to New Lork. To the east. But I don't... Hmm. Perhaps. But I can't get you as far as Durandal, obviously. Uh, no, no, no. But, uh, uh, partially making the traverse a little bit easier would be nice. Oh, I could certainly do that in spring. Makes sense. Spring. Well, yeah, so I'll remember traffic this most part. This is our last of our shipments given from Old Lork. And will not continue then until the spring. Oh goodness no. The amount of time and manpower it takes to organize such a such a venture is uh <laughs> well, it takes weeks. This is so, our last stop for the season. It is the autumnal equinox after all. Winter is here. So is you staying here for the winter? Of course. Huh. The summer home down here in the lower city. Oh, you mean a winter home? Well, a winter home, a summer home, it depends on what the flights might fly. But, uh, who, who's talking? My, my good daughter will stay here in the summer, and I shall stay here in the winter. And then she leaves? Yes. Oh. Well, she had not informed me that she was to leave. Oh. Well, you must speak about that visit later. Well, most definitely. Tell to find me. a new friend, I do like to keep track of him. So how's your time in Durindal been? Quite interesting. Town had uh, an issue with, uh, I don't know if it was plumbing or what, quite stench at one point. A stench, you say? It, yes. was, it was quite the reek. Oh, yes. interesting. Well, you know, those nice oil collectors are irregular. As the bowels tend to be. Well, you know, I suppose someone must keep the salt pediment happy, correct? Ho, 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 the salt <laughs> pediment. Don't give me, get me started. Uh, actually, I, actually, I'd like it if you would. Yeah, quite I'm sorry, Mr. Forrester. No, I, I'm... Quite with... frankly, Tewin and I have had, uh, let's just say it plainly, arguments with the salt pediment that uh, didn't result in the best of circumstances. Mm. Maybe maybe they thought I was an old man on a walking stick. Could be. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have my name, so... He will probably tell you more with successful rumor dust. This test, however, will be routine for you. Uh, you may not assist die because Terwin is there. Yeah, I, uh... Do, do, do. My, my little joke about being an old man. <laughs> yeah, maybe that helps. They right. definitely <laughs> warning-shotted you, not worded you first. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Seeing if I had it. I do not have any skills, I think. Probably right. even more skills than rumor? Uh, no, I have four. Oh, seeing talents. if I had any I say. traits or talents, but I don't. Uh, so that is a 36, which my rumor is a 62. Nice. Well, he will, he will kind of stand a little closer and my disagreement with the salt freedom has turned to frustration. Their actions and illegal seizures are beginning to are starting to disrupt my business on the river. Illegal seizures? Yes. He kind of steps a few, a few feet closer. The salt peenemen have reached everywhere. I've been here in Kael Tyrion. Of course. They may call Durindal their home, but uh, know that the Jennies. He says, he kind of says, derogatory term for the Genevieve, the divorced baron for the baroness. The Genies even have their, their, their owl talons here, in, wrenched into Tail Tyrion, the salt penumen. Mm. In fact, as I understand it, the, uh, the leader of the salt penumen is actually here in Kale Tyrion. Yeah. No name, do you? So we, we know who to avoid. Our salt peterman don't say. Hmm. But you know these rumors. Someone who looks like they're a little bit taller, a little bit smarter. Hmm. A shot collar. The big baller, if you will, salt peterman. You could wish only it. wish I was. <laughs> you got it! <laughs> there you go, there's my song, right? Yeah. I wish I was. Yes, the word is that the Salt Pinnaman leader is here in uh, Kael Tyrion. For purposes or another. Any idea why? Well, 
come now. It is the autumnal equinox, and the place to be to celebrate is Kale Tyrion. And if you know anybody who's anyone, Lord Clayton Arkay invites only the most esteemed guests to his annual celebration. I have, uh, I have the privilege to say that I have been extended an invitation as a VIP. Oh, well, of course. Makes sense. A very integral person. Yes. Yeah. I, uh, I believe your daughter has been extended some of the same courtesies, actually. Yes, he says. In fact, I'm glad you brought that up. Donna came to me just last evening yeah. to speak that you were to be her escort. Yes, yes. Well, uh, she quite invited me, yes. You can tell that, that uh, Tobias Stroh is trying to put accents on the wrong words like he's trying to speak up. But he's clearly born really low. So not burger. No. no. She spoke of such. She, uh, she did ask me for an escort, and I, of course, graciously accepted. Yeah, that's Who fantastic. Who couldn't in her company? Well, you know, along with uh, extending my investors into commodities, mm -hmm. I have also extended into uh, pret a porter as they say in Galeone. Ready um, to wear clothing. Oh. A draper's daughter. A draper. Oh, yeah. A draper, yes. Yeah. Well. That was just a different name for people. A crudente. <laughs> <laughs> indeed, she had mentioned she wished to take you dress shopping. She did indeed mention such to me. Good. I'm certain she shall uh, shall find she'll find you right back here to take you to the warehouses. We have uh, a number of pret a porter dresses. Fitting for the masquerade ball. Ha ha ha. Or, fine pants suit if you wish. I, I would stay here when I don't think the dresses would quite fit you. No. No. No, I'm too short. Yeah. It happens. Well, Sometimes you don't have the figure. It's fun. Yeah. Well, no less. This has been uh, a pleasure, Milady Marius, and I hope you will... Please pardon me, but I must attend to some morning business. Perhaps no, a pickle stairs. for the road. No, yeah, yes, I, I, um, I'll take as many as you'll give me. I could not turn down such hospitality. Please, he hands you the whole jar. Oh, well, thank you so much. You shall find so... not yourself in a pickle without uh, Tobias Stroh. Trader extraordinaire. Well, maybe tell I'll your friends. Tell your father if you speak to him. In a pickle. <laughs> right. Please, if you would, let people know in the city that I am a pickle man now. Oh, yeah, <laughs> of course. Pickle man now. I shall spread the word. <laughs> so, <laughs> that brings us to <laughs> the upper city with the three of you. So you all have disembarked from the battle line. And you begin to make your way up to the streets above the bustling port. Make your way above into um, Kale Tyrion proper. And what you find is a place very much unlike uh, what's down below in the lower city. A place that bustles with an equal amount of activity, but among a number of a number of stone buildings and towers arranged this way and that along the roads. You can see that these boulevards are cobbled and demarcated with these tall iron kind of fancy of kind of ornate posts with signs up on them indicating the street you're on. The place seems well organized and well built as a large castle kind of dominates all uh, of, of dominates both sides of the bridge. And there are a number of uh, gap number of friars who have gathered in the town square to sing and you can hear their hymns being sung as others are all around the autumnal equinox is only a time for celebration but a time for remembrance uh, as winter is coming and it's time to pay tribute to the winter king he who brings the snows that will eventually freeze and cleanse the death that has wretched the land until it is then uh, sprung by the martyr he is a part he is one of the four seasons although he is seen as a god in some places he is more so a spirit among the the Aradane, and it's not surprising to find that many tales particularly about autumnal equinox are spoken or are spoken and sung about him and there's a 
very beautiful voice kind of coming from the collection of, uh, of friars. And you can see this man with a very deep and bassy voice leading them in song and in prayer. Without a doubt, it is better go made the Maritona Melagain. Sounds pretty good to me. You're in. You both are missing, right? You're looking for the captain. Do we know where he's at? Do we need to meet this man? What's the boss for us to do? We're just so confused. Well, I mean, the overall goal has been to take a look at, find anyone who might be on that list, who might be of import, kind of suss them out, see how they feel. But, I mean, I don't know. I mean, we drink a lot, and uh, I've slept since then, so I'm not quite sure what we talked about this, this man. Did we even talk to him? He's busy now. I wonder how long this performance is. I'm going to look around and see if there's like, a placard or a bill. Or, like, a... There are people, there are literally children, wives, and husbands sitting down upon the stone ground as he's gathering this <laughs> kind of half-sunken stone arena. There are at least 200 people collected here, right where the stairs lead up to the top of Kael Tyrion Green. And the rest of the city kind of spreads out on both sides of the river. And you see this massive, ornate, arched stone bridge that, the, that is abridged on either side with two twin towers that watch over everything. Seems to have quite the collection. I don't think we're going to be able to see it. We move on and see if we can't find them. I mean, we could. I'm not opposed to that. All right. But we got this one right here, so we could we either wait it out or we can go. Well, everyone around here looks pretty well settled. It's a collection of clapping at this point as his song has ended as he leaves, but his, uh, he, the people are kind of, he are throwing flowers at him as he is clearly kind of raising his hand. He appears to be a man in his 50s with a slight amount of makeup very well refined and dressed from where you had seen him the night before when he was slumming it down in the lower city. The music will continue kind of as he steps off of his day, off the stone dais and continues raising his hand as he is taking deep bows. You can see a, a pushy manager kind of pulling him by the arm, kind of get him through the throngs of both men, women, and children who are trying to get his autograph on a, on a broadsheet. That simply says, uh, the baritone at dawn. Oh. Meet, meet Master Vetter Cobain, the baritone of Bellagain. And you can see this like picture of him kind of with his hand arisen, and he is this caricature, this caricature of him <laughs> on these pieces of paper. The broadsheet. That's the broadsheet. what I was looking for. Yeah. I was like, there's got to be a broadsheet about this, right? Yep. Okay. <laughs> He's clear, it says, Vetter Cobain, the baritone of Bellagain, on tour! <clears throat> From Old Lork <laughs> to Kale Tyrion, all the way to Rowling and Chander. <clears throat> well, we should. You can see that you can see that on the, <laughs> the broadsheet there are dates and locations on the course, and his tour seems to end here. Oh. It is autumn. That makes it. Does the autumnal equinox? Winter is here tomorrow. Well. Hmm. It doesn't make sense. I mean, a lot of people don't like to travel during the winter because of the storms and the weather. And well, hey, nobody likes sleeping outside. It's that cold. Unless you're us and you have to or something. All that makes sense. I'm going to try and speak to this man. That manager seems to be the person we need to distract. Warren? Well, I suppose we can just. Yeah, let's do it. Are? I think it's not the autumnal. I think it's the winter equinox. Because of the autumnal equinox when fall begins, this is supposed to be when winter equinox. E equinox is summer. Is, is the fall? The yeah, equinox is fall. Solstice is winter. solstice. Yeah, you're talking about winter, winter solstice. solstice. So yeah, so it is the winter solstice. Oh, okay. Correct. So yeah. Further. Okay. Yeah, it's we're we're to the solstice. We're to it's the first day of winter. Oh, okay. it's That's definitely right. not fall anymore then. That's right. Winter has come. Winter has come. Winter, winter has come after all. 
Yeah, so, sorry about that. I think, we, I, for some reason, I thought the autumnal equinox was when we transitioned from fall to winter. <laughs> for, 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 conversation for, is, king. We've had this conversation last game. It's like corruption, know, right? He's just not getting this one. It's okay. We'll get it right in the book, all right? Yeah. That's right. We'll, we'll get, get it right, right in the, the book. book. We'll fix it in post. Well, it's okay. It to is... be fair, you were right about autumnal equinox. It's just not the time where we're at. That's right. That's That's right. right. You had the, the term right. Just... That's right. That's right. So we are now toward the, almost the first day of winter starting tomorrow. And the it has grown colder over time. That's why we're there not moving. I was thinking. Okay. Grim and colders. <laughs> Grim and <laughs> wrong seasons. So, so, so let's... Uh, well, we can make our way towards them, see if we can uh, find an angle. Oh, well, let's just use the path that we usually use. Just run right through the middle. You stumble into the one that uh, we're trying to distract, and we'll grab the, the barrister or the baritone so he might can speak with him. All right, then. Follow my lead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Following behind Warren's blundering, uh, and blunder he ro- will, roll an intimidate test. This okay. test will be challenging. Alright, so a challenging intimidate will be a 41 as I push my way through the crowd. And that's a 30. Okay. He blunders his way through the crowd, separating uh, the better Cobain's uh, manager from him for a mere moment, giving you the opening that you need. Master Cobain. Why, yes, he says. I'll give him the best hawkish nose upward as I can. Yeah. But it's great to meet you. I've heard things about you. The great leisure is mine. <clears throat> I am the bard Vena Cobain. <clears throat> and you are? I am Vanica Steeples the third. Third of your name. Oh, second of my name, sorry. Second of your name. Second of my name. You must have a very oh. strong bloodline to carry such esteemed surname. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. My uh, colleague and I, uh, I believe my colleague uh, had drinks with you in the lowest city a couple of days ago. And a colleague? Yeah. Yes. You may not remember me, Harper Clavager. Oh, yes, my Master Clavager. We did have the, uh, a moment, I believe, down in the lower city before I laid my head to rest. Here, among you. People, my adoring fans. <laughs> well, it's truly been a blessing to hear. He you holds say. his lute over his shoulder like this, over the back of his <laughs> of shoulder. Course. Like he's got it like out like this. He just kind of holds it over his shoulder like this. It's like the back of it's on his shoulder and the arm of it's out right here. Yeah. <laughs> my adoring fans. Huh? You can see that the man's clearly face is clearly powdered and a fake beauty mark has been placed upon his cheek. But there is an air of refined elegance, an impeccable sense of proper etiquette, and just the slightest touch of me. He's easily a man in his fifties. He wears Dapper Dan in this hair to ensure that it looks black, no gray. I'm a Dapper Dan man. He's a Dapper Dan. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want pop. So well, we have. Um, we will be seeing you uh, late tonight at the uh, festivities. We the festivities, be... he says. Please. What festival is you referring to, my lad, my friend? Of course, the ball, my... Of course. The ball, he says. The... Just find it right. You probably get something that actually looks like a loop. Oh, oh, the loop. Not time. a real guitar. Is it, is it the, next the next night? Night? Oh, yeah. I thought it was tonight. That's tomorrow, we, we figured it out. Oh, I'm sorry. I screwed that up. You yeah. are mistaken, my friend. Oh, of course. Lord Clayton Arke. The younger... Has professed his sponsorship for my performance at his masquerade ball. It is something I truly look forward to. Say, Master Clavager, will you be in attendance there? I will be. Fantastico! Although you may not know why. Say, in Ferrisimi. Indeed. Well, you may not know who I am. 
once you start singing, we'll all know who you are. And Have fantastic. you lost your dog? He says, kind of pointing toward Warren. Warren looks over with Get him. upon your <laughs> feet! Are you a man or an animal? Oh, I just fell over. <laughs> he, pull, he pulls you up off your hands, <laughs> hands and knees. Stand, man, well, stand! Well, have you, some dignity! How do you do to you two? Uh, yes, I'm with them. I <laughs> am the bard Velico Bane. And you are? My name's Warren. Just Warren. Well, Warren Rhodes, yeah, yeah. Uh, Warren Rhodes. Yeah. And from which road do you hail? <laughs> Worn ones. I'm, I'm uh, uh, well traveled. I'm from Grolstead up north. Grolstead. Yeah. Uh, well, I should yeah. say I've never heard of such a place. Is anybody else? Anybody? Harper raises his hand. I have because of Is this some matter of farm that you hail from? Oh yeah, we have farmlands, plenty of other things too, but mainly that. Yep. I see. Well. No, it's a pipe. Would you like me Don't to look. sign the rod sheet? Uh, you have one in your hand. Oh, that's you, isn't it? <laughs> that is me, the Bard Vera Cobain, yes. You are, and it is indeed he. He is I. He points for the paper. It is I. Well, uh, I guess you can if you want. I mean... He takes a quill from behind his ear, and uh, someone on his side, one of his groupies, he dips into the ink and... Ha-ha! <laughs> I think we're good. Huh. We will see you um, at the festivities tomorrow night. Master Steeples, I shall sing the most beautiful song you have ever heard with your ears. I promise my performance will be nothing less than a blessing and a miracle. Blessing and a miracle. You've that never is. heard... Songs like these, I assure you. He bring. He <laughs> 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 start playing. <laughs> He's playing his lute. People gather around. I'll, I'll kind of lean in. We don't. Well, catch you later. <laughs> we start to back up. <laughs> you leave the collection of people. The sounds of his loot. <clears throat> uh, yeah, <clears throat> I think we can tell the boss that uh, from more and more distant. He is not. <laughs> we don't need to watch him too closely. Unless he's wearing blue. Well, I mean, that would be a to keep an eye out for, but I mean, sometimes it is the ones who don't look the part that might, I mean, if this guy is someone who can get around real easy, get upper and lower in the crusts, he might make, well, well a very good he, he, the, thing is, the thing is, you talk for you talk for a minute, what, what kind of shake did you get out from just talking to him? Didn't seem like he was lying or anything like that. It just, seemed like he was putting just on just a stuffed shirt. That's all he is. That man is playing a role almost all the time. That's it. If you if you don't think that man can lie straight to your face, then, well, you just got fooled. Well, it's bluster, though. That's what I'm saying. I don't, I don't believe there's any... I mean, the man has been on tour. It's not like they have staged him I'm, to I'm come I'm not saying he's the end. one that's going to be doing the deed. I think... The, I mean, but he could... So you're telling me performers can lie. Right. I, I, I have met prostitutes in my day. So right. I know that performances do happen. Right. There we go. Plain as he has on his face! Is Sammy with us? Yeah. He's with <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's like, no, where did Sammy yeah. come from? <laughs> Sammy just he just up. like appears in the crowd. <laughs> I'm here for COVID relief! <laughs> nah, I'm just joshing you. You hayseed. He's, he's like every Marvel movie with a with a CGI character. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, he's our CGI character. He's our Jar Jar Binks. Well, I mean, he's the age of the shield. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, got, I, I may be hasty, but uh, I got us here, didn't I? So, <laughs> I mean, you got us talking to the man, but do we? We've, we've met the bard, and you'd met him before. I don't see this as being 
an avenue of violence. Well, let's see, move on then. <laughs> I could be wrong. <laughs> I ain't exactly ruled them out, but uh, sure. Have you ruled anyone out you've met? Uh, sure, Wolfgang. I've not ruled Wolfgang out. I mean, he's for the Baroness, <laughs> so... You just can't let that one go! <laughs> you just don't like him. That's fine. It's I'm... just a joke! That's the reason Wolfgang and I don't get along. Look, I'm gonna go inquire about Wolfgang. I think I know a doctor down the road. I think we should go as well. well let's follow that What good you gonna do? You'll need three heads, to, you'll need four heads to talk to a doctor. Right, but if his brother, who was a war vet, was after him, he might be in trouble. He might need a couple extra hands. Well, I'm sure if he is after him, he'd be debbing out down the river. Things aren't gonna come to blows in a, in a fancy place like this. And if they did, well... Pretty far down the river, isn't it? <laughs> a good hundred yards all the way down, I think, almost. We must be at least half a mile up. So all right. Half a mile. So I, figure, I'm just I, I figure we just find this old Warhol dude, person. Well, let's just start asking around with his workshop, his gallery. You all inquire about? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All of you may make rumor tests. This test rumor. is hard. Our, uh, what are these people so Uh You're an Aradane, so your test is easy. Everybody else's is hard. Uh, I thought it was Romanians. Uh, well, it looks like up here there's only Aradane. Oh, well, fuck this. People look at you all strangely up here. Mm -hmm. uh, you said it was hard, or...? Yeah, it's hard for you, unless you're arrogant. Yeah. Yeah. So, 33. Yeah, roll. 15. I'll take it. I roll a 3. I roll a 4. Really? <laughs> <laughs> well, you almost come to the same conclusion together. Andrew. Andrew Ryan. No, uh, they, will tell you, they will tell you. They will tell you. Amani Warhol, that's a very, very peculiar name, the man says. Can't say I've ever heard of it. Sounds like a fair semi to me. Yes, he's supposed to have uh, a gallery or... Oh, yes, that fellow. He wears a very tall, padded white wig. He's talking to his friend. And that blue scarf and the rotten teeth. Yes, uh, our money wall, that one. He's an Altese. You know the type. They're yes. all usually very eccentric. But I know, I've heard of, I've seen this fellow walking about the streets. I guess he must be Armani Warhol, but uh, not from around here, you see, the fellow says. Yes, with that name, it makes sense. Definitely not, to. Without a doubt, the Pharisee, the woman says. Would it be uh, down the lower city, then? Or would it be up here? I could not say. Huh. Say. Hmm, that's a shame. But certainly no shops <coughs> around here. <clears throat> Is the upper city mostly residential? Uh, and, 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 and and administrative offices? Yes, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Temples, administrative offices, right. yeah. offices of the ministry. Yes. Okay. Well, well we can always ask about... Uh, you know that since the destruction of Belagade, that the satellite office to the high ministry is actually here in Calteria. This is presided by a man called the Bajir. Who oversee? Who's the Lord Knight who oversees the High Ministry? So there's no is the, the Ministry, the Parliamentary Ministry offices here. Okay. That's right. I did not know that. Cool. Well, have you heard of a? Uh, so would I be able to take my father's seat since he's one of the lords? <laughs> Another question, <laughs> but I'll let it be. You suspect that your you know your father wouldn't be here at this time, right. and after all, what happened? To Bellagame was not too long back when they relocated Parliament here, right. or the Ministry as it's called. It is now winter, so you, they only come in summer. Preside in summer, I should say. Hmm. Well, well, have you ever heard of a... We heard of really good things about a, a, a man who makes food, uh, an Oliver Ramsey. Do you know where he is? Uh, Oliver Ramsey! Why, yes. He maintains several eateries. Throughout all of Caleteria. Wow. The fanciest of kitchens and diners. Hmm. No mere soup kitchen, I trust. No oh. stew on the corner. He's quite a franchise here in Caleteria. 
Is that the is that the case? Well, indeed. More and more than one restaurant. None of them, none of them uh, street stalls. Huh. Well, I guess that means it'd be pretty tough to find them, unless you wanted to go on a walking tour. <laughs> Plenty of vittles. Well, <laughs> you certainly could do that, I suppose. That's uh, quite a few, in fact. Which is the nicest? The finest. Well, he has several fine ones here. One just across the way, a small pub and grill, a eh? another that is a cattle steakhouse, and of course there is uh, the Abyss's Kitchen. Mm. <laughs> well, I'm always up for a steak. Mm. My saying is, it's never a mistake. Go for steak. Your rule wit sometimes loses to me. Shepherd's pie, scotch eggs, a fantastic Danish Wellington. Hmm. Which food is not good for the uh, constitution? It is great in moderation, toil. yes. But... but it is the winter solstice when it's required to extricate that poison within one's gall. Eat rich, they say. Exercise the demons. Exactly why we're looking for, uh, well, a really nice meal. Well, the admissions kitchen is just around the way. Let's go check that out. I think so. We appreciate your time. Of course, he says. He and his wife excuse themselves. Would you say happy solstice? Happy solstice. Solstice. Merry Solstice. Merry Solstice. Merry Solstice. Ho, ho, ho. Merry <laughs> That's Solstice. That's what I was going to do, but I was like, ah, I don't So, you head down to Abyss's Kitchen, and it is a very large eatery, and they get one good look at you all as you come to the door, and they're like, do you have an appointment? A reservation? A fellow, a fellow says, the very thin, pencil-thin mustache, Looks like a matron, a Renaissance maitre d. He's standing at a podium and he has this big, thick book with a lantern and a candle up on it to illuminate in the dark. He's beneath a large pink parasol. I, I, I believe I do. It would be into steeples. Steeples, you say? He says. Master Steeples. Minister yeah. Steeples, he says. Yes. Minister Steeples, I am so sorry. Please excuse me. Of course, Master Minister Steeples. Uh, please, come with me. Do you have uh, a coach we should park for you? No, no, we would just... I shall have the valet take care of it. We would just on a walk. There's these two young boys with little che- cheesy teenage mustaches waiting there. <laughs> They're wearing little, little, little velour suits. <laughs> yeah, one of them rushes across the way to grab somebody's horse and carriage and buggy and kind of bring it forward. As there's this fancy couple outside with a woman with a long blue dress <clears> and a parasol. The other a very fine-looking fellow with a cummerbund. They're waiting for their coach to be brought to them. Please, Master Steeples. Yes. Minister Steeples, I am so sorry. Please, inside with you. Thank you. Thank you. Warren clears his throat and hikes up his pants. <laughs> More not to, please. please, please. Uh, just making sure I'm... You'll be Just fine. right. You'll be fine. You're part of my retinue. I don't want to embarrass anyone. Well, that's hard to do. Well, that's good. Inside you go to this very fine establishment. This is a very, very busy place. It is bustling, and you can imagine the finest of establishments as you are taken to this long mahogany table laying with a heavy uh, doily and a tablecloth, and they proceed to pour you fresh decanters of water into wooden jacks. A fellow with a rag over his shoulder, over his uh, arms, says, Master Steeple, Minister Steeples, it is a pleasure. Uh, the night, the 165, uh, he says, sorry, the 165 Avalon, if I recall. Yes, please. Will you continue this charade while you're here? I thought it was 
I thought it was obviously that I'm not my father. And they clearly, 20 years my senior. They have clearly mistaken you for this, however. Uh, will you continue the charade? Well, I will, I will tell this man. Do you understand that my father is the minister? I am the minister's son. He finishes, he corks the bottle. Oh. I'm sorry. The servant says. This is a... We'll, we'll take that. This is a 168 Abelard. Uh, forgive me, I do not think we've had the pleasure. That's why I was going to make sure you understood who I was before you popped that button. Such in haste, I'm sorry. Uh, whatever the bottle is, please bring it. Of, of course, uh, master, young master. I, my father is 20 plus years my senior. I thought it would be obvious, but I know our look is quite the same. Yeah. I bear his name for that reason. Of course, he says. The 168 have a lot. He will pour a glass for each of you. It is the richest, finest wine you have ever had. There is a there is a minty aftertaste, an oaky kind of aroma, and orange and clove. You can feel tantalizing your taste buds. Warren raises his glass. I know. You gotta say a toast. And I think it's appropriate now to say once you pop, you can't stop. <laughs> 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 Today, <laughs> I just saw my class trying not to laugh at Warren. <laughs> what is your? What is the chef's special today? Uh, no, yes. Today, my told me to come in here and make sure that I met with uh, uh, Ramsey. Ramsey, he has spoke so highly of this man. Oh, chef. Chef, yes. The Chef Ramsey, the owner of... Chef, yes. Uh, first, let me tell you what was on our fare for today. Oh, please. Choice between a scotch egg to begin, shepherd's pie or ale, battered fish and chips for your, for your entree, and then a beef, oh, sorry, a Dunish Wellington has a mousse bouche. To start your mouth. Yes. <clears throat> Finished with a shepherd's pie. Mm. Braised. It was very rich and perfect for the solstice. What a way to kick off this. Merry solstice. Merry solstice. Yes, you, yes. You proceed to eat. I shall inquire with Chef. It would be a pleasure to meet him and to face with such a such a really just my father said such wonderful things about his food and the man himself. Oh uh, yes. I'm just laying it on thick. I have no idea if my father even knows the man. You will need to convince <laughs> him with a charm test. Oh, I am sure this man is lower than me. That would be uh, he is an he is Aridane. All that matters up here is whether you are Aridane or Rovanian. So it'll be Is he outside of my social class? Because that does matter for a town. He is. He will be routine. Harper is thinking to himself the things I do for the Ukrainian see is his sour stomach. He knows he's going to have problems. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I got a 13 out of 87%. Nice. Just eat the apple. On the I shall inquire with Chef. And with that, the uh, servant will, dis will leave and we will take a pause and resume with episode 46 of Queen of Embers.